SLIM's unique and proven methodology, built on empirical data and research, solves your estimation challenges. Software estimation is often confused with high-level management goals, releasing a product in time to meet a market window, outbidding competitors and winning the business, etc., as well as detailed planning activities, constructing a work breakdown structure or listing the tasks needed to execute a project. Unlike goal-based estimates, capability-based estimation is a technical calculation of what a team might be able to do assuming a given scope, cost, schedule, staff, and uncertainty level. Typical projects overrun their estimated schedules and budgets for the following reasons. Unrealistic estimates that exceed current capabilities. Not estimating scope or the volume of delivered features. Failure to re-estimate when scope creep occurs or not understanding the consequences of adding staff to reduce schedule. In this video, we will show how empirically based estimation tools like SLIM Estimate can reduce estimation time and effort and deliver achievable estimates grounded in actual performance data from real projects. Estimating software projects is challenging because estimates are typically needed when we know the least. Often, stakeholders want a single point estimate based on hidden assumptions, yet they expect pinpoint accuracy. Having empirical data at your fingertips helps you communicate more effectively and negotiate achievable plans. The first step in creating defensible estimates is to recognize why we perform estimates. Often, estimation purpose drives the estimation approach. We may want to support a bid and win new business or prioritize the backlog of project features. Often we need to assess and secure required funds, resources, and skills. We also want to set realistic expectations and be able to negotiate achievable commitments, identify and mitigate risks, and then develop a plan. The plan is last. A key function of estimation is visibility. A good process prompts you to ask questions, bring misunderstandings and risks out into the open. Organizations sometimes confuse these terms and the business practices they represent. The term estimate is often misunderstood. So with each project we have a target and a goal, something we hope to achieve. But there's usually something holding us back, a practical limit or constraint, such as time, money, and resources. So the estimate is a technical calculation of what we might be able to do, assuming a given scope, cost, schedule, staff, and uncertainty level. Then we want to be able to enlighten the business so that they can make a decision by selecting one estimate scenario and assign company resources to meet the target within some level of constraint. The plan, the list of tasks, activities, and milestones comes last. Estimation is challenging because estimates are needed early in the project life cycle when very little data or knowledge is available. Because so much about the project is unknown, the level of uncertainty and risk is high. Uncertainty about the final size, effort, schedule, cost, defects, and productivity decline as the project progresses, but never completely disappear. SLIM uses best available client industry data to produce defensible, rough order of magnitude estimates that can be quickly and easily updated as we learn more. Estimation is both a technical calculation and a communication and negotiation process. Chances are, if six people in different roles think about an upcoming project or release, they're visualizing completely different beasts. A good estimation tool brings hidden assumptions out into the open. Consistent and management measurements give teams a repeatable framework for analyzing and discussing the work to be performed. Mapping to any framework requires time and effort, but the payoff is that everyone discovers which parts of the elephant 
they were thinking about. Viewing the elephant from multiple angles provides a more complete picture. Software metrics should support their intended use. This is true whether you are estimating a new project or benchmarking a completed one. How would you describe an elephant to someone who had never seen one? Well, that probably depends on what they need to know about the elephant. Detailed versus summary level view? Both are accurate and both are useful. If you've been asked to draw an elephant, the detailed view makes more sense. But if you're building an elephant house, the summary view is more useful and practical. What you need to know depends on why you need the information. Estimation falls into two broad categories. Bottom-up estimates decompose all the work required to build the product into a detailed task list. Estimate duration and effort for each task, then some task estimates to produce overall schedule, cost, and effort. This requires detailed knowledge that we may not have. Top-down estimates combine summary level metrics from similar completed projects with observed relationships between project variables, time, capability, and cost. For early estimates, detailed task or role-based estimates suffer from a mismatch between the data available and the data required to create a detailed task list and estimate the schedule, effort, and dependencies for each task. These kinds of estimates are closer to planning than upfront estimation. A high level of detail makes them difficult to revise and update when the landscape changes. Top-down estimates require fewer inputs that are easier to capture consistently at project closeout. We can use historical data to tune estimates to our past performance and benchmark against history. Here is just a few of the pros and cons between bottom-up and top-down estimation approaches. What we need is a practical and effective estimation solution. So what qualities make an estimate good? It's timely, can be performed when it's most needed. Defensible, backed by data. Transparent, the assumptions are known. Evaluates multiple solutions. This allows us to explore a range of potential outcomes. It accounts for likely risk factors. Contingency is explicit and scaled to risk. The productivity assumptions are tied to actual performance, easy to revise, and provides a consistent and repeatable approach. So how does the SLIM estimate solution work? SLIM's top-down approach models any development project type and methodology by using two high-level building blocks, five core metrics, and four life cycle phases. Core metrics create a common language, a frame of reference. Consistent measurement and comparisons require consistent definitions. Focusing on summary level metrics decrease the cost of measurement and promote industry and internal comparisons. Simple high level metrics are a better match for what we know or can estimate early on when estimates are typically performed. All product development projects perform the same basic activities. Modeling our environment is simply a matter of knowing how much time and effort is spent in each phase and the level of concurrency between these activities. The rate at which people are applied to the project is modeled using the Rayleigh statistical curve. SLIM can be configured for waterfall, agile, or hybrid development environments. SLIM provides objective expert judgment in a box, largely due to the QSM industry database and trends, which supply major inputs, size, productivity, and schedule and effort, and are used to validate the reasonableness of estimates. 
QSM has a global database of completed projects, over 13,000, collected from clients and industry. Slim ships with 17 trend groups, including system software, agile, package implementation, government, and finance. The core metrics scale non-linearly with project size. These relationships are robust and consistent over time and across domains. Empirical knowledge of these relationships is built in to SLIM estimates, algorithms, charts, and reports. Not only is history used as the source of major inputs, ensuring estimates are based on known capabilities, but comparing past performance, both industry and yours, lets you instantly assess whether estimates are reasonable and what assumptions should be challenged. Is the staffing too high or required productivity unattainable? The best practice of gathering your own completed projects lets you adjust key estimate inputs based on averages from your projects and generate a balanced risk solution based on your history. Let's take a deep dive to understand the dynamics of software development projects. The software production equation is at the heart of SLIM tools, based on Larry Putnam Sr.'s original work. The size of the system, the value delivered, is proportional to some amount of effort applied over some amount of time at some level of productivity. For straightforward estimates, inputs are size and productivity, and outputs are time and effort. What is productivity? Productivity in SLIM is not a traditional linear measure, but describes the efficiency of the whole project environment. Much like this pipeline, software project efficiency will be determined by the capacity of the environment itself, affected by a host of factors, some of which can be quantified and some of which cannot, such as personnel factors, the morale experience management capabilities, technology factors, tools, infrastructure, language, process factors, standards, maturity level, combined with the difficulty of what you're pushing through it. Product factors, the size, complexity, hardware integration, and reuse, existing software, existing documentation. Rather than attempting to identify and predict each and every factor, SLIM takes a different approach. It calculates the total effect of all the factors, whatever they are. We know from Larry Putnam Sr.'s original work and the scatter plots we saw earlier that schedule, effort, defects, and productivity all increase non-linearly with size. Size is a measure of the project scope. Ignorance of size leads to bad estimates because the size determines the time and effort required. Software size is not duration, effort, cost, or complexity. These things are influenced by the size, but not equivalent to size. It is especially challenging for folks used to bottom-up estimating not to specify effort as a measure of project size. We'll soon see that time and effort are trade-offs, so how much effort is required is driven by the schedule and vice versa. A closer look at the software equation namely the exponents on effort and time, show that not only are these related non-linearly, but that time has the greatest impact. We always want to get projects done as quickly as possible, but that is often a risky scenario. Projects can be scheduled and staffed in different ways, but for a given project, the same size and productivity, time and effort are never completely independent. You can choose to take more time and not only reduce staffing and cost, but increase quality. If you have to increase the effort to achieve a scheduled goal, okay. Going too far in either direction gets you into the impossible and the impractical zones. SLIM lets you know where these zones are. Early estimates often require us to combine what we know, often very little, with the reasonable assumptions about what we don't know, 
often a lot. The software production equation can be rearranged to provide different estimation approaches. Fixed resources determine how much functionality or scope over a given time for a given level of estimate. Bid evaluation calculates the productivity needed to build a certain amount of functionality within a certain amount of time and effort used to determine the feasibility of bids and benchmarking. Time boxed fixed team calculates the delivered size given a specified amount of time and effort and productivity. Explicitly quantifying uncertainty enables you to manage it because you can't eliminate the uncertainty. Imagine a project team building the same product a hundred times. Because their productivity, work plans, team size, and costs would naturally vary, they will not all achieve the same outcome. Some will be over budget and some will be under budget, some over schedule, some under schedule. But what we find is that most projects will come in somewhere around the middle. SLIM uses Monte Carlo simulation to compute the range of potential outcomes and their relative probabilities. The width of the curve can vary, but it will never be just a single point estimate. And the width depends on the number of variables and uncertainty around each one. You will know what is most likely to happen and can calculate risk buffered solutions with contingency. Most solutions in SLIM represent the expected or 50% probability, but you can add constraints to get risk buffered solutions. The constrained solution method generates a 50% work plan with enough buffer to meet your targets and the desired probabilities. Even though we calculate that a project can be completed in 9.26 months, we commit to the customer to deliver in 10 months. This gives us about three calendar weeks of reserve to respond to risk which might threaten the schedule. Without this risk reserve, the moment one problem compromises the schedule, we are in danger of overrunning and not fulfilling our commitment. The SLIM estimation solution provides many benefits. The top-down approach produces defensible estimates early when little is known about the project. Estimates are defensible and reasonable based on known capabilities. You can quickly run multiple scenarios to explore the range of potential outcomes and commit to the best solution and explicitly deal with uncertainty and risk, providing contingency to overcome those risks. If you would like to learn more about the SLIM's estimation solution benefits, please contact QSM at this email address or telephone number.